as I make this video, it's almost the winter solstice here. So I thought today we would talk about how to create the effect of a sunrise just peeking out between the clouds. That's typically what we get here um, around solstice. It's often cloudy and you see just a little peak of the sun before it's behind the clouds again. So I'm going to start by making a horizon line. And this is just a little reference line for me to keep track of where I want my horizon. And this painting is going to be mostly about the sky. So I'm going to use a low horizon. I'll be coming back later to add a tree line there, but this is just going to give me a reference for where I'm going to put my little sun peeking through. Now, typically when the sun's just peeking through, you get um, pretty red-orange sort of glow there on the horizon. So I'm going to mix up a little red-orange. Then there'll be a little bit of more yellow right next to the brightest part. So we'll have the sun kind of centered in this piece. I'm going to lay in some yellow color on the edges of the clouds. There'll be a bright white right where the sun peeks through, but then Grade quickly to yellow, and then I will add in my orange. And as I move away, I'll go more into the red tones, working my way out. reflect into the foreground and underneath the clouds. I'm going to switch more to um, a rose color under the clouds. So I'm going to just extend this wash. Now most of this is going to be hidden when I'm done. And then also right down here in the foreground, I'm going to bring that color right on down the page underneath, that will be underneath my foreground wash, but you'll see that having this warm color underneath the foreground is actually going to help give the effect of that bright orange light bouncing off the clouds and onto the tips of the trees and the other shrubs that we have. Now, I just don't want this, even underneath the clouds, I don't want a harsh line there because even if I come back over with a darker color, it's likely that if I have a hard edge, the edge will be visible. So I'm going to just kind of wash that out. If I wanted to, I could start adding my cloud color up here. In fact, that might save us a little time. Let's just mop up a little of this extra color color so that it's, I think we need a little more orange down the bottom too before we play with any cloud colors. So let's get that in. I want this nice and orange down here. Maybe we'll drop a little of this yellow into the foreground area. And now, I could go ahead and save myself a little bit of time, even though I'm going to add more of the cloud effects later, I could do a light layer now.
this is starting to dry here, so I need to be careful. I'm going to lose all my great effects if I try to go too much farther. So let's just soften that edge. probably need to let this dry now because this area is getting dry so if I keep playing with it I'm going to wind up losing some of that nice light there in fact making my brush strokes through there did but I notice that this is at a good time to create a little bit of a bloom that will work for me so let's take a little bit of Um, wait. Let's purposely make some some blooms. So we killed two birds with one stone. We got rid of that little edge that I created by bringing my brush through there with a little bit of um, dirty paint on it, and we've created some radiating sun effects. But now it's probably time to quit messing with it before we mess it up. So let's leave it alone and we'll come back in a little bit when it's dry. Alright, so our first wash is dry and you can see that this area here that looked pretty dark before is actually not all that dark, which is fine. We wanted it just to be the lighter layer of our clouds. Now the first thing I want to address is this hard line right here. That's not what you would see at the horizon if the sun were just peeking up. There's a glare at that edge. So let's soften that edge. I'm going to use a tissue. And remember, you want to use um, something that does not have lotion built into it. You may have to search around a little bit these days. Um, but the lotions, the oils and the lotions can um, cause a resist on the paper. So use just plain really inexpensive tissues that don't have any um, added lotions. Now I'm going to take my angle shader which is wet but not drippy and add some water right along that edge and just tap up and down to soften and loosen the paint right along that edge. And as soon as I get the paint moving I'll blot that up so that it doesn't have a chance to go off and settle someplace else I didn't want it. And I'm actually going to pull my tissue down this way because if the sun were just coming up, that glare would appear to come towards the viewer. So as I soften this edge, I'll also go ahead and pull towards myself so that that glare appears to move a little bit down over whatever we're going to paint there in our horizon. A little white here, we'll just fix that. And then also, the edges of all these little clouds would probably be softer. I don't want to disturb every little bit of that because especially on a piece this size, I'm going to lose my whites. So what I'm going to do is come out towards the edges of those clouds and soften the edges and try to leave some of that central area alone. Okay. Now we have softened enough of our edges. It's time to lay in our next layer of clouds. So there are a lot of ways to moisten an area without disturbing what's underneath. One of them is to use a hake, which is a very soft goat or sheep hair brush. And you notice I'm holding it, just sort of letting it sit and rest in my hand. And when I draw it across with water on it, I'm going to just allow the weight of the brush to move the water. I'm not going to push like this because if the bristles are flexing like that, then I'm putting pressure on the page which could move some of the paint. So I get my brush 
nice and wet. Carry enough water that it's really, f the brush is full of water, but it's not dripping where I don't want it. And then I just allow the weight of the brush to do the work. And you can see from this water over on the side, I'm not moving very much, if any, of my underlying paint when I do this. Basically just the paint that was sitting over on the side on the tape will move. Now as this water sits on here, it's going to gradually soften the paint that's already on the page. So I don't really want it sitting there for a long time. So I'm going to take my work. Blot up and the excess. All right. And now I can go in and lay my second wash. And again, I've got to be careful. This paint now is damp enough that I could, theoretically, I can move things I don't want to have moved. And I want to make sure that things don't migrate in this light area. So I'm actually going to take a tissue and dry this area a bit just to make sure that paint doesn't run into that that I didn't want. So let's lay in our dark clouds, our dark winter clouds up here. You can see this is wet. I'm getting a soft edge. And I'm going to leave some little lights peeking through as often happens in the winter. And get those sort of flat layers of cloud. Occasionally there'll be a little light peeking through here and there. Just a little bit peeking through. Now I'm getting down closer to my sunrise. I'm going to be careful not to lift too much. This is the scary part. We can go right over what we've done because remember, we wanted this just peeking through. So let's let it just peek through. We're right across there. I know that's kind of scary, but you know, this is just a, a little five by seven piece. If it doesn't turn out, we can certainly go back and try it again. I want some clouds through here. I don't want that much peeking through. And just as I did before, I'm going to go ahead and carry this right on down into my land forms because, again, I want that much darker, so I may as well have some of this color to help me out. Unless I have water down here, I'm not going to leave any of that really completely exposed because it would not be anywhere as bright as the sun peeking through there. Now while this is still wet, this time I'm going to do a little softening and lifting while things are wet. I could wait until it's dry, but I can also take a damp brush, a thirsty brush, and lift so that with a thirsty brush, you want the brush just damp. You don't really want the brush to transfer water onto the page. You want the brush to be a little bit drier than the page so that it pulls the water back off. A little light reflecting off the underside of these clouds that are going to be a little closer to us. Give a little texture to those clouds. I'm going to let my brush start moving a bit because as I get closer, of course, the shapes are going to appear larger. The shapes of the cloud bases. So we'll allow that to happen. 
All right, now we're back and our piece has had a chance to dry a bit. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is finish softening this area. Um, sometimes if it's really hard to do that while it's wet, it's just better to wait until it dries where you can have a little more control. So I'm going to use an angle shader and I'll get it damp but not drippy wet. And I'll find an area that I want to soften and I just sort of tap that edge to just move a little bit of the pigment. I'm not scrubbing a lot because then I'll just wind up with a white line. I'm just trying to agitate the pigment that's right on that edge. Let's do it right here where you can see a little better. So just tapping up and down. Don't have to be terribly aggressive. Just tap, 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 and then lift. Okay, so one way to create a distant tree line is just to put your brush on the paper on its side and roll it. And as you roll it, kind of let it meander up and down. See how that works? That's kind of nice. Huh? Oh, it's not dark enough there. Oh no, it didn't cover everything up. That's all right. We will get our tree line established, get our shapes established, and then we'll worry about cleaning it up and getting it dark enough. I like this edge to come up a little bit more, so I need to do it over there. Now, that's all wet, so if I come in here I can use this previous line as a guide, just kind of following that. I use the random motion of the brush mostly because if we try paint stuff in nature the way we think we see it, we tend to make it too regular. So by using that rolling the brush technique, I made myself let that be a bit more irregular, so that's what I want. Now I'm going to just come down, bring the rest of this dark color on down the page into the foreground. It's kind of magical, isn't it? because I allowed the, um, the wash from my initial sky to come all the way down the page. You see these warm tones down here, which appears to be light bouncing off the clouds. So that works to your advantage. Don't be afraid to do that. I think I want to add some darker. This kind of looks to me like a little field down here, which is a little bit lighter, but then there would be some darker areas at the base of the tree. So while it's still wet, Let's get some dark in at the base of that tree line. And we'll make it kind of a bluish, purplish dark. Because what would happen down here at the base of the tree line is the colors that would be down here would be reflecting from the sky that's behind us. So it tends to be rather purplish if your sky is a uh, early morning sky. You notice that when I get in close to the center area, I'm not adding as much of the dark there. And that's because in that area, we have this brighter light that's reflecting down into our foreground. So that actually does generally appear a little lighter. And then we'll just bring some of this color down here into our foreground. And there you have it. Uh, early morning winter sky with the sun just peeking through.